All right, and YouTube is telling me that we are live, which is awesome. So welcome everybody. Um, as a quick check, this is the first time I've live streamed solo in quite a long time. So if you guys could let me know in the comments if you are seeing me and hearing me all right, um, that would be awesome just to make sure everything's working. If you are hearing me and seeing me, awesome. <laughs> welcome, uh, my name is Forrest with Rocky Mountain School of Photography. And today we are gonna talk about exposure basics. Um, and this is gonna not be a quick tips video. This is gonna be kind of a long form, sit back, relax, and master exposure together. Um, so definitely get yourself your favorite beverage, get your camera out if you've got it. Um, and let's go ahead and dive in and chat about what is involved with exposure, what our workflow can be, um, and kind of how we get started. Um, again, if someone could comment, let me know if you're hearing me, that would be awesome. Make sure that I'm getting all our chat messages here. Give me one second. There we go. Um, all right, perfect. So obviously I want to make sure our chat's working because if you all have questions throughout this, I would love you to ask them, um, in the comment section or in the live chat feature, um, so that I can answer them as we go. So definitely let me know if you've got any sort of questions. Um, that would be super sweet. Um, yeah, we're going to give it like one minute for people to kind of tune in and then we're going to go ahead and dive in. So let me know in the comments if, you, if you're if you here. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself, what you're excited to learn about, and we'll dive in here in about 10, 30 seconds, something like that. All right, perfect. Got someone saying loud and clear. That's what I like to hear. All right, cool deal, everybody. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and start with a couple quick um, kind of lessons. So the first thing is, if we're gonna understand exposure, we need to understand f-stops, shutter speeds, and ISO. So what I wanna do is kind of conceptually talk about what those three things are and how they work together, and then I wanna go over to our little top-down set and take a look at them in real time, show you guys on a camera how we adjust for those. Now, this is not gonna be super basic. Um, I want you all to kind of watch my previous exposure videos if you need a super basic review. So we're going to go pretty quick through this part, and then we're going to get into the actual workflow part of this. So first of all, shutter speed. Shutter speed is super simple. It's how long your shutter is open for. So this comes with some kind of technical and creative side effects. Um, technically, if your shutter speed is longer, meaning your shutter is open for a longer duration, you're going to let in more light. So in darker situations, you're going to have to use a longer shutter speed in order to get a proper exposure. Shorter shutter speed means shutter's open for less amount of time, lets in less light. If it's a bright sunny day, usually you can use a super fast shutter speed like one four thousandth or one eight thousandth of a second, something like that. Okay. Creatively, shutter speed controls motion blur. Um, make sure that things are working. Oh, getting an error. YouTube not getting smooth enough stuff. Um, hopefully you guys are still hearing me all right. Let me check one thing real quick here. All right, good, good, good. Cool, cool, cool. Sorry, YouTube's just giving me an error. Um, okay, anyway, shutter speed is uh, creatively controls how much motion blur we have in our shots. So if you use a slower shutter speed, you're gonna have more motion blur, more blur in your images. And that can be used as a creative effect. That's not just a bad thing, that's also sometimes a good thing. You all have probably seen those waterfall shots with nice streaming water running down rocks. That's an example of a slow shutter speed. It's used as a creative technique. Faster shutter speed is more of stopping motion. Now, the only thing we need to really remember with shutter speed is if you are hand holding your camera, if your camera is in your hand, you're not using a tripod or a rock or something to support your camera, you really wanna be careful with your shutter speed because if it goes too slow, you can start to get a lot of motion in your images just from your own normal movement as a human being. So I like to say, one over 250th or one 125th of a second is the minimum that I try to hand hold at. And some people will say, oh, you wanna use the one over the focal length rule or you wanna use the, there's all kinds of rules around there. But here's the deal, you all. Why do we wanna to toy with this? 
This is one of those things where if you use too slow of a shutter speed, you take a blurry picture. And if you take a blurry picture, you're gonna throw that picture away. So I'm very, very cognizant and cautious to never go slower on my shutter speed if I'm hand holding than 1 1 25th or 1 2 50th of a second. And that can even be lengthened or sorry, shortened, shorter duration, bigger number. Um, if you're shooting something that has a lot of movement uh, involved with it. So let me just make sure stream's still working here. Uh, one sec, stream health, not receiving enough video. Sorry, everybody, give me a quick second. I just wanna make sure that we are running here. Don't know why things are running slowly. All right, cool, 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 on air, 4.1 megabits. Apologies, everyone. Don't mean to have a poor stream quality for you. Store chat, all right, things seem to be working fine still. Apologies about that. Um, Again, first time streaming in the new video studio, there's definitely gonna be some kinks that we need to work out along the way, but hopefully you all uh, are still hearing me and YouTube's just giving me uh, pointless warnings, although rarely is that the case. Um, but ba, 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 let me open the widget here. All right. Okay, we're just gonna keep going, keep plugging along. Hopefully it works, sorry about this. All right, so, 1 over 1 25th or 1 2 50th of a second are going to be those shutter speed targets that we're going to try to hit in order to keep no motion blur from our shots. Now, what does this mean? Well, those of you out there who might be a wild or a uh, wildlife photographer or an outdoor photographer or something like that, you might need to go faster or slower than this in certain situations. So if I was gonna shoot a waterfall, I would need to go slower than 1 1 25th of a second to get that nice blurry milky water that I'm after. Okay, I don't wanna belabor that too much. Next thing is aperture. Aperture is a opening in the lens. It's how much light flows through that opening in the lens and hits the sensor at the back of the camera. Very simple, a larger opening, which is actually a larger opening is a smaller number when it comes to aperture, but a larger opening is gonna let in more light, which is a good thing. It allows more light to hit the sensor, good for low light situations. Smaller opening lets in less light, good for brighter situations, we could say, simplification. Creatively, aperture has the biggest effect of our three controls. It controls how much depth of field we have in our images. And depth of field is a measure of how sharp or blurry the background is in your photographs. So if you use a large opening, you're letting in a lot of light and you're also blurring the backgrounds a lot. So portrait photographers, you all are gonna wanna use large openings uh, good, a lot of you are saying you're getting great stream quality. I don't know why it's warning me then. Cool. Large openings are going to give you a lot of light and they're also gonna give you a nice blurry background. Small openings are gonna give you less light and they're gonna give you sharp, crispy backgrounds. So to, to simplify that, if you're a portrait photographer, you're gonna wanna use a large opening, blur the background, landscape photographer, small opening, and you're gonna wanna make sure the backgrounds are sharp. Numbers wise, very, very simple. The smaller the number, the larger the opening. So I know it's contrary to what you might think, but that's the way that photographers have chosen to do that. Basically, the lower our number is, uh, the larger the opening is. So portrait people, low numbered apertures, landscape people, high numbered apertures, all right? Third thing is ISO, used to be called ISO, actually it was never called ISO. We used to call it ISO, but it's pronounced ISO. ISO is your sensor's sensitivity to light. Higher the sensitivity, more light. Lower the sensitivity, less light. Higher the number, more light. Lower the number, less light. Very, very simple. Creatively, ISO plays very little in the whole role of creativity. The only kind of notable thing with ISO is the higher your ISO goes, the more sensitive your camera gets to light, but also you get what's called noise, which is kind of an artificial pixelization, speckliness in the background of your images, okay? You all, the cool part about this is aperture, 
shutter speed, and ISO work together to control how bright or dark your images are. And what I highly recommend you do if you're just getting started in photography is set your camera to manual mode so you can really control all three of these things and see how they work independently from one another. It's really a recommendation of mine. I wouldn't go to manual before you have some shoot you have to produce good images for. It's a practice thing, but go to manual so you have that control. And then also we're gonna wanna go to the evaluative metering mode or the smart metering. And I'm gonna show you guys both of those things when we get over to the top down set. So give me a quick second here. I'm gonna switch cameras um, and I'll meet you guys over at the top down set. So give me a quick sec here. We're gonna switch over here and I'll come meet you over here. All right, so make sure everything's still going. It is. Hey, look, it's me and my camera. Okay, so let's look at where this stuff goes. So I've got a Fuji camera here, but it's gonna be the same on pretty much every camera brand. You're gonna have a number of dials on the top of your camera. And you guys can see on my Fuji, they make it real simple. This dial right here controls our shutter speed or how much light is coming through the shutter, how long the shutter's open for. And you all can see, 8,000, that's one eight thousandth of a second. That's a very fast shutter speed for stopping motion. And then <clears throat> we can go all the way to one second, which is very slow for showing motion blur. On a Canon camera or a Nikon camera or pretty much every other camera, they won't label it. Instead, it's gonna be this little knob right here that you twist with your pointer finger and you're gonna be able to slide through your shutter speeds. And if I turn this camera on, I can show you guys the screen here. And if we go into the quick menu, you all can see that as I twist my shutter speed dial, that little number right there changes, which is a measure of our shutter speed. And you all can see if I twist it a bunch of times, we can go all the way to even 30 seconds as a shutter speed or something super fast, like again, one eight thousandth or one four thousandth of a second. So that's how much light is coming through the shutter. Same thing on the Fuji, same thing on Nikon, pretty much every other brand, okay? So that controls our shutter speed. Now, aperture on some cameras is on the lens. So this Fuji camera, we can see here are our apertures, aperture F1.4, that's a low numbered aperture, which means two things, right? Low number aperture means it lets in a lot of light and it also blurs the backgrounds, both good things. And then we bring that up, F16 is a high number, so it doesn't let in much light, but it makes your backgrounds nice and crisp and sharp. So landscape photographers, you'd wanna be F16, F11, F8 in this range. Portrait photographers, you would wanna be in F2, 2.8, 1.4, somewhere in this range. And I should also say not all lenses will go this low. It's kind of a, um, the more you spend on your lens, the lower aperture it will go, meaning the more it will blur your backgrounds for you. All right, Canon wise or Nikon wise, um, a lot of the Canons or Nikons or Sony's or more expensive Fuji's or a lot of other brands, they'll have a thumb dial back here that you can spin with your thumb as you're using the camera. Um, this is an entry level Canon, so it doesn't have a thumb dial. Instead, it has an AV button. And I, I picked this Canon Rebel because this is a common camera that a lot of beginners start with. But in order to change the aperture with this camera, we're gonna simply go into that quick menu we can turn that pointer finger dial to change our shutter speed. If we wanna change our aperture, we hold that AV button in, and while holding that AV button, excuse me everybody, while holding that AV button, we're able to twist that front dial and change our aperture. So sometimes you'll have a dedicated button for it. Um, sometimes you will have a, uh, an actual thumb dial for it. Sometimes you'll have an AV button. It kinda depends on uh, what camera, what brand, what model, all of that kind of stuff, okay? Lastly is ISO, super simple. I'll use the Canon as the example here real quick. Most Canon cameras or Nikon cameras or Sony cameras or Fuji cameras or all cameras will have an ISO button. And if you push that ISO button in and you look at the screen on the back, you're gonna be able to choose your ISO. Again, higher ISO means more sensitivity to light, but also more noise, which is that bad kind of speckliness in the background of your images. So. That's how we control all this. Now on the Fuji or some other cameras, and I, I say Fuji, a lot of cameras do this kind of layout too. Fuji, we actually have an ISO dial. So we can spin that dial and that's gonna control what ISO we're operating on. 
Okay, so real simple, very much like an old film camera. If you have an old film camera, Fuji lays out their cameras very, very similarly. Okay, so the other thing I mentioned was manual. You definitely want to be on manual mode when you're learning because it's going to give you full control. So most cameras are going to have a mode dial on the top where we can set it to M. And M is manual mode. A is aperture priority, T is shutter priority, and P is program. Green is like auto, but really manual is where we want to learn. So let's put it on manual. And then also I mentioned metering modes. The other thing we're going to want to do is put our camera in uh, smart metering. Some companies call it matrix, some companies call it evaluative, some companies call it zone metering. There's lots of names for it. Um, on the Canon though, the way we change that is we go to this little metering section right here. And that's the symbol we're looking for. It's a valuative metering. And then again, that's on the Canon. I'll show you guys here on the Fuji. Um, the Fuji uses symbols similarly to Nikon and Sony. You all can see that little dial right here. And we can see here are our metering modes. We can flip between them. That little symbol right there, I'm going to get this as close as I can. That's the symbol that we're looking for. That means that we're in the right of valuative metering mode. And then we also, like I said, we want to make sure we're on manual. And that allows us to have full control without the camera making any decisions. And that's really important so that we can make mistakes because all photography and learning exposure is making mistakes and messing up and learning, oh, wow, when I turn this dial a few times, my image gets brighter, my image gets darker, I take a picture. Your camera's not helping you. It's letting you make those mistakes and it's just letting you do it, which is a really Really great way to operate and great way to learn this stuff. So let me pop back over. We'll go back to the A set here and we'll do some examples. All right. So here we are back, back here. Um, so you all, hopefully that makes some sense. That's basically what we're going for. We're to learn, we're going to be on manual, we're going to be on evaluative metering or zone metering, and we're going to be using our f-stop shutter speed and ISO or f-stop and aperture are interchangeable, our f-stop slash aperture, our ISO and our shutter speed to make decisions. So with all that said, what's the workflow? How do we work through a problem, we could say? Um, how do we kind of get into this and start to say, all right, I'm a landscape photographer, so what do I need to care about? How do I do this? What do I use? And in order to understand this, we need to understand our camera's meter a little bit. Okay, so this is like a little foray into metering. You all, when you look through your camera, there's gonna be a little needle, and that needle is gonna slide to the left and to the right when you make adjustments. What types of adjustments? Well, the three things we just talked about, f-stop, shutter speed, and ISO. When you adjust those, you're gonna slide that needle left and right when you're working, and that needle is an indicator of how bright or dark your resulting photos are going to be. So the idea is we use these three controls until that needle is in the middle, and that's when the camera's telling you, hey, this is a correct exposure. And the reason I say you gotta learn is because there's a lot of ways to get that needle in the middle. We could adjust our ISO to get that needle in the middle. We could adjust our shutter speed to get that needle in the middle. We could adjust our aperture to get that needle in the middle. All three of those controls could help us get that needle in the middle, but learning which one to use when and allowing us to make mistakes, that's what manual mode is going to do for us. That's what it's gonna be there for. Okay, so let's take a look at that and let's run some quick examples assuming that we are going to be centering out our meter. So give me a quick sec, I'm gonna switch over to my uh, little whiteboard here, whiteboard slash iPad. Make sure that we can see that. And let me switch you guys over so that you can see it. Okay, so let's say that we are out there in the field and all of a sudden we point our camera and I'm gonna switch back to you guys. All of a sudden we point out at our, at, point our camera out at the scene and we adjust all of our dials. We just do it willy nilly until all of a sudden our needle is in the middle. Okay, you guys all with me, right? We just go, whoa, like spin some stuff around. We get in the middle. Oh, we have one question on the chat. Do I recommend using auto ISO? Um, sometimes I will use auto ISO, uh, but only if I'm not trying to learn. If for learning purposes, I recommend uh, adjusting your ISO intentionally, learning when to do it. And that's what we're gonna get into right now. So you're out there in the field, you're taking a landscape picture. 
And what you do, because I told you to, you put your camera on manual, you take those three dials or three controls, ISO, shutter speed, and aperture, and you just spin them around until that needle, the meter needle, is in the middle, okay? And then you look in your camera or on the screen on the back at what your ISO is, what your shutter speed is, and what your aperture is, and you make some informed decisions. So let's look at that process. So let's say I'm out there in the field, and I, I center everything out, and I look down at my settings, and I'm at one, 30th of a second, that's a 30 on the screen. I'm at ISO, let's say 400, and I'm at F, let's say 11. Okay, those are my initial settings. Again, how did I get those? Well, I, I centered out my needle, and I just willy-nilly adjusted things until my needle was in the center. I didn't do anything magical, I literally just willy-nilly adjusted things on my camera. Okay, so now, now that we've got that initial setting, we've got 1 30th of a second at ISO 400 at F11, what do we need to do with it? Well, let's blow some holes in these settings. For one, I said we're shooting a landscape photo. So what's gonna be really important with a landscape photo is we're gonna want a nice small aperture, small opening so that everything is sharp from the front of the photo to the back of the photo. That's gonna be really important for us, okay? So F11 is pretty good, it's pretty close, but we could go to F16 or F22 or F32 to get even more sharpness from the front to the back. Another critical thing, my shutter speed, let me go back, is 1 30th of a second. And this could provide a lot of problems for us if we're hand holding, right? We can't use this for hand holding. Because if we're hand holding, that's too slow to take a sharp expo take a sharp picture with. We need to make that faster. If you have a shutter speed, or sorry, if you have a tripod, that's gonna be totally fine. But let's say we don't have a tripod. Okay, so quick example here. If we don't have a tripod, we're gonna wanna make our shutter speed faster. And you all, basically, the whole world of photography works in doubling and having the amount of light. It's called a stop, okay? And I'm getting a little bit more advanced here, but I want to kind of move through some things, get you guys kind of used to this kind of stuff. So our problem is 1 30th of a second is too slow because we don't have a tripod. So we need a faster shutter speed. So check this out. If I go to 1 60th of a second, I've just let less light in with my shutter speed. So I'm gonna take a photo that's too dark and the little needle, the little meter needle is gonna be at minus one. It's gonna be showing me that it's too dark. So I'm gonna have to adjust either my ISO or my aperture to get more light. I need more light because I'm letting in less light with my shutter speed. So I don't wanna let in more light with my aperture because I like F11. I think F11 is a good thing, I wanna keep that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to ISO 800 at F11 and I'm gonna try that setting. And then I know a 60th of a second is still a little bit too slow to handhold. Again, at the beginning of this lecture, we talked about how 1 1 25th or 1 2 50th is what I recommend. So let's go to 1 1 25th and again, I'm just spinning the dial on my camera to adjust this. I wanna keep F11, because I like that nice small aperture, so we're gonna have to let more light in with the ISO again, and we're gonna go to ISO 1600. So you all, what I'm telling you is, and this is kinda cool, I think this is cool at least, you guys might not think this is cool. What's cool about this is, this top set of settings right here, and the bottom set of settings are exactly the same. They're gonna give you the same brightness of final image. And what we've done is we've let two stops less light in with our shutter speed, and we've let two stops more light in with our ISO to compensate for it. And let me switch back to the camera here. You guys, this is all of photography, right? You have these three settings and they can go any number of different ways. So what I like to recommend to total novices is to go out in the field and just willy-nilly adjust things until that meter puts you right in the center. And at that point, you know that your camera's telling you that you will take a well-exposed photo, meaning the photo won't be too bright, it won't be too dark. But then you look at those three settings 
and you make informed decisions about which ones you like and which ones you don't like. In this example, we didn't like shutter speed because we would have taken a blurry picture. So we need a faster shutter speed, which is gonna let in less light. So we've gotta let in more light with a different setting. And in this case, we picked ISO. So again, going back to this, these are the exact same exposure the exact same brightness, but one of them is more informed than the other one. Taking this one step further, if you are a landscape photographer, you might want more depth of field, more sharpness in your background than what F11 offers you. You might wanna shoot at F16 or even F22. Well, F16 lets in less light than F11, and F22 lets in less light than F16. We're getting a lot less light there. So if we wanted to keep 1 1 25th at F16, we would have to then go to ISO 3200. And if we wanted to keep 1 1 25th at F22, we would be at ISO 6400. And again, this other set of settings is also the exact same brightness as those other ones we mentioned before, okay? And this is where it gets kind of weird because you're like, wait a second, Forrest, like, how is all this the same? Well, it's the same brightness value. The resulting picture is gonna look completely different. And y'all, I don't mean to scare you too much because most of this stuff comes naturally as you start shooting more and start experiencing photography more and getting into this more, you start to kind of make these decisions um, as you go, which is kind of cool. Now, I wanna make one other little observation here. Uh, most landscape photographers would have a tripod. And if you have a tripod, you don't have to worry about how slow your shutter speed is. So let me show you an example here if we have a tripod. All right, so same exact settings. Let me go ahead and grab my eraser here. Same exact settings, zap all this out. But this time, let's assume that we have a tripod. All right, so what do we wanna do differently? Well, if we have a tripod, we can get uh, a lot slower than 1 30th. We would be able to go to 1 15th if we want to. We don't have to, but if we want to, we could go to a 15th of a second, all right? Well, if we go to a 15th of a second, that gives us more light to work with. So we'd be able to let in less light somewhere else, right? So if we wanna let in less light somewhere else, well, guess what? We could go to F16 at ISO 400. And that would be a better photo if we were shooting landscape because we'd get more depth of field. We'd have more stuff sharp from front to back. We could even go to an eighth at ISO 200. What's the advantage of going to ISO 200 instead of ISO 400? Well, you're gonna get less noise, less of that speckly grossness, and we keep this at F16. And again, this is the exact same exposure or same brightness as before. Taking it a step further, we could go to a fourth at ISO 100 at F16, and that would be an option as well. Now. Remain, needs to be said, at one fourth of a second, you're really slow on that shutter speed, right? So you might have at a fourth of a second, you might have yourself a tripod, but if the wind is blowing, it's gonna blow your plants around and you're gonna capture that motion. So don't think, oh, I'm always safe at a fourth of a second if I have a tripod. No, the wind is blowing. Also, we're shooting landscape right now. We're not shooting a moving subject. So if you're shooting a moving subject, a fourth of a second is way too slow to stop motion, okay? You guys, this is how you gotta work through these things. It's almost like problem solving um, or you know, solving like a word problem in math. It's like, how do I work with these different opportunities, work with these different sliders and get it to go? The one thing I want to say, all four of these sets of settings, the needle for the meter is going to be in the middle because it, they're all the same. So if, if you center the needle on one of them, it's going to be centered on all of them. All right. We're getting, we have one person saying, Luke is saying, thank you for the stream. Didn't realize that one stop is just double or half the amount of light. Yeah, Luke, that's a great uh, kind of observation. Something that I didn't explicitly say. You all, I keep talking about stops, right? We, we open up a stop, stop down a stop. One stop is double or half the amount of light. And the nice thing is, 
aperture, shutter speed, and ISO all work with stops. They all work with one half, having or doubling the amount of light between the two. Okay, now let's say, I'm gonna go ahead and erase this all, and then I'll switch over to the camera so you guys can see it. All right, let's say that we are a portrait photographer. All right, let's say we're a portrait photographer and we go out and we're shooting a picture of someone and we are on manual because we want to practice and we spin all our dials around and our initial settings look like this. 130th ISO 400 F11. Let's talk about the problems. The first problem is you don't really want to shoot a portrait at F11. It's not going to look super good. The background's going to be really sharp. We're going to want a very low numbered aperture. Ideally, I'll put a goal up here. Uh, let's see, goal. Why are you not writing pencil? Oh, I'm on eraser mode. Sorry, everybody. Goal for aperture would be something like f2.8, a really low number, not a lot of depth of field, right? Blur the background. Another problem is our 1 30th of a second, because if you're doing portraiture, you're not hand holding, or sorry, you are hand holding, you're not using a tripod. And moreover, your subject is moving as well. So we need something there as well. Uh, we have someone on the chat, important assumption to be understood, sensors, yes. Uh, it's a great assumption, you guys can look in the chat. Um, uh, Rappo to YouTube is making a good point. Um, this is why we put our cameras on evaluative metering or zone metering. Um, there is a big assumption here that we're pointing at something 18% gray, but again, that gets into how your meter sees light and all kinds of crazy other things. So I'm trying to keep things simple for this stream, and, and one thing I kind of need to level with all of you I'm making a lot of simplifications here. Um, there's, there's more to almost everything we've talked about than what I'm able to fit into a 30, 40 minute YouTube video. So do keep that in mind for sure. Um, that is a great point to make. I think that, that yes, you advanced photographers are thinking in the back of your mind, well, yeah, assuming we're always looking at 18% gray. Those of you who are just getting started, don't worry about that too much. Um, this is a workflow that's gonna get you close in almost every situation. It's gonna get you close to that perfect exposure. And again, it's here for learning. And that's again why I say like, don't go to manual mode if you are trying to take really great photos and it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Shoot with what you're comfortable with. Manuals for when you're learning. Great point, okay? So, portrait wise, 1 30th is too slow. So, let's play the game. Let's go to a 60th. So, let's keep our ISO the same, ISO 400. And we're letting in more light or sorry, we're letting in less light here, so we gotta let in more light with our aperture. So we go to F8, that's the next aperture. And the numbers are kind of weird. Again, if you're a beginner, spin the dials, you'll see what it says. That, you guys, is the same setting. Nicely, we could get more light with our aperture, whereas when we were shooting landscape, we weren't able to do that. We had to use our ISO because we didn't want to change it from F11. We wanted that sharp, crispy background. All right, one, 1 125th. Now we're kind of getting into the range that you can hand hold. Let's leave the ISO at 400. And now we're at F5.6, okay, which is even more blurry of a background, even better of a portrait shot, which is awesome. Let's go to 1 250th because if I'm shooting, if I'm moving and the subject's moving, we never know. ISO 400 and F4. And I'm even gonna go one more to one 500th of a second at ISO 400 at F2.8, which is our goal, which is awesome. So again, really cool. This set of settings is gonna give you the exact same brightness in your image as this set of settings as all of these set of settings as well. They're all gonna give you the same brightness. It's really a matter of adjust one one direction, adjust the other one the other direction, and you're gonna be able to make things work. But you guys, check this out. Check out this bottom little set of settings here, right? If I go ahead and let me circle this in red because this is super important and really cool to kind of think about. What this means is, as a portrait photographer, we're able to shoot at one five hundredth of a second, which is very fast. One five hundredth is fast enough to stop your movement as the photographer, as well as your subject's movement, which is great. You're not gonna take a blurry picture, right? 
We're at ISO 400, which is not very high, so we're not gonna have a lot of noise. And we're at F2.8, which is letting in a lot of light, and it's also blurring the backgrounds and making everything smooth and crispy and nice behind your subject. Okay, so that is how we work a problem. It's how we work through these types of things. We see one thing goes up, one thing goes down. Obviously, your initial three settings are gonna be different than what I'm using right here. I'm just magically picking three numbers for f-stop, shutter speed, and ISO. Yours will be different, but the key is to work those numbers, keep them in mind, adjust them up and down as needed, all right? What questions can I answer from you guys? That was kind of a general workflow overview for portrait and landscape and things like that. But what questions can I answer? Drop those in the chat. Uh, we'll, we'll keep this chat open for a little bit. I wanna kinda see what you guys have. Um, is this making some sense? You need some clarification on anything? Let me know in the chat over here. I'll take a little bit of a look. Let me pop out my chat. Also, I should say, while I'm waiting for questions, um, RMSP is having a swag or merch sale right now. And we actually just came out with some brand new, I think they're pretty cool, pretty cool hats. Um, you can see this one's more of like a trucker hat. It's got the mesh back, super nice. And then this one is more of a classic baseball hat. Uh, both these are on our merch store, which is shop.rmsp.com. There's a link down in the description to take you there if you wanna check those out. Um, they're on sale as well as RMSP gift cards are on sale as well. So if you wanna take one of our online classes um, or one of our in-person classes, you can save some good money uh, doing that there. So definitely check that out, shop.rmsp.com. All of our merch is on sale. Uh, we have a lot of cool stuff. Also, like the video if you guys have gotten some usefulness out of this. I would really appreciate it. Any other questions before we, before we call it? You all, that's how I work problems. That's how you do this in photography. It's really a matter of, of getting that initial set of settings, again, by centering out your meter and then making fine tune adjustments from there to really get what you're after and really nail, hone in on that exact perfect shutter speed, aperture and ISO for your situation. All right. Well, I've not seen any questions, so you all, I really appreciate it. Thank you for hanging out with me for, uh, what, are, what are we, about 35 minutes. I appreciate you all watching. Um, again, hit subscribe if you guys wanna stay up to date with future stuff. Check out our merch store, shop.rmsp.com. We also have a community forum website. It's uh, community.rmsp.com. You all can ask questions there. Um, our, our past students and staff answer those questions, so we'd love to see you guys there. If you're getting started in photography, come introduce yourself, uh, we'll help you kind of get start and find the right right education for you thanks everybody i really appreciate it and i hope to uh 